oh it's just a niggle then boom you're injured So is a niggle an important feature of understanding injury and the prediction of injury? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. We're going to discuss what research has found with people who've got niggles and the consequences to injury. So the first thing is, what is a niggle? So basically, a niggle is where you've got some pain or discomfort that is mild, um, but it doesn't really limit you. It doesn't prevent you from doing anything. It's just there in the background, just being a nuisance more than anything else. Whereas an injury is obviously a bit more than that, the pain is higher, and it has some restrictions to you. It stops you from doing a particular activity or impedes your ability to do something, it affects it in a negative way. So that's kind of the differences really between what would be classified as a niggle and what would be classified as an injury. So how likely are you to get injured if you have a niggle? Well, that's what this research paper looked at here. It looked at footballers, and it looked at 218 footballers over a season, which was 35 weeks. What was interesting is over a quarter of the players reported a niggle every single week. So niggles are very common in footballers and obviously in other sports as well. And uh, this highlights that this uh, is a prevalent feature and could be very relevant. And if it's something that is relevant, it's something that we could use as a monitoring tool to determine if someone is likely to get injured or not. So what did they actually find in terms of the the risk factor, if you like, of a niggle turning into an injury. Now, if you have a minor niggle, they found that you were 3.6 times more likely to have an actual injury. So that's just with a minor niggle. And a minor niggle would be minimal discomfort, minimal effect. Um, but you can see that's quite a big difference compared to people who have no niggle. Now, if you have a moderate niggle, which is a bit more discomfort and a bit more uncomfortableness, but still not limiting, you remember, because it's not an injury, then the increase in risk factor was much higher. Again, still very significant again. And it was actually 6.9 times more likely to get injured from your moderate niggle, so which is massive again. So this highlights that we should not just ignore niggles. We shouldn't just put up with niggles and just go, ah, it's just a niggle because you're more likely to get injured. You're more likely to have pain. Now, this was obviously applied in the sporting context. That's a, a high level sport. So it certainly applies to that kind of field of work and they're putting their bodies under a lot more strain. But if you think about general population, the amount of people I see where they come in with an injury and I'm like, so when did it start? And they'll go, oh, it started about a year ago and it was a niggle. And then it built up and worsened until finally they were like, this is more problematic and it's limiting me now. And then they had to go get it dealt with. So this would be a, a very key point to make uh, uh, clear to people is that if you've got a niggle, why not try and deal with it there and then? Try to be preventative because at the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. And it's certainly possible in individual cases to be able to achieve this. Um, so yeah, if you have a niggle out there, don't just put up with it because there is a likelihood, not a guarantee, but a likelihood that it could develop into an injury. And you don't want to get an injury because once you've got an injury, you're never quite the same again and it's a lot harder to deal with. So anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.